I want to take a closer look at finding the particular solution for, in this case, an RLC circuit. But in general, it's a particular solution for any circuit uh, that would involve any number of, of resistors, inductors, capacitors. All right. Now this is going to be for the case where the external forcing is constant, or at least we're going to say it's piecewise constant. All right. So for instance. We could have a Vs of t that is equal to just Vs for all time. Or we could have a Vs of t that is equal to 3 plus 2u of t, which would be 3 for all time up to 0, and then it steps up to 5. Right? That would That's piecewise constant. The idea that is that within some segment of time, uh, there is uh, no change in Vs. For those cases, and assuming that you stay at those values for, for a reasonable amount of time, uh, we can actually come up with the particular solution just from a circuit approach rather than actually guessing at the particular solution by looking at the, um, looking at the differential equation. So uh, consider this. Consider that in steady state, okay, for a constant valued excitation, i.e. Vs is just equal to some constant and has been that way for a long time, then we would say that a capacitor in steady state becomes an open, and an inductor in steady state becomes a short. So let's consider the, the RLC circuit. I'll just do an example here. Example. Consider the RLC that we had previously. Uh, we had VS, R, or L, RC. I swapped the R and L around, but that doesn't make a difference in the circuit. What we'll do is we'll redraw this in steady state, where the inductor will become a short, and the cap will become an open. And the question is, what is the particular solution, Vc of p? And here it's trivial, right? We see that there's no place for any current to flow, and so there's no voltage drop across R, so therefore Vc of p is equal to Vs, as we had found when we guessed at a constant k and plugged it into the differential equation. Now let's consider something uh, a little more complicated. So here's another example. Let's have Vs as before. Let's put in a resistor R1 and a resistor R2 and a voltage source Vx. And we'll do an R3 here. All right, and now we'll add our L and our C. And again, let's say that we were trying to solve the uh, for the complete solution the, the capacitor voltage. So we would look at in steady state. All right, notice that these are constants, constant sources. They're not, it's not sinusoidal or changing in time. And so now let's uh, redraw our circuit with, uh, by shorting inductors and opening capacitors. All right, so we have R3, and now we have our inductor that is shorted. And as before, we have our cap that is open. And this voltage here is going to be the particular solution. Notice that what we're really solving here is the same type of circuit that we solved way back at the beginning of the course. Right? When we first started doing some circuit analysis, the only thing we knew about were independent voltage sources and current sources and resistors. And that's exactly what we have here. So everything that we learned back at the, you know, when we were taking uh, just baby steps uh, comes back to serve us well here. I can write Vc of p by superposition. So we have uh, just a voltage divider, right? If, first of all, notice this. There's no current flowing through R3, right? No current because there's no place for it to go. So R3, just like R up here, had no bearing on the voltage Vcp because no current could flow through it. Similarly here, R3 has no bearing on Vcp. The only resistors that have any bearing on it are going to be R1 and R2 and my two uh, voltage sources. And so when I look at this, these, this part here, I see 
uh, just a summing of two voltages and it's weighted. I can write this by inspection. So I have uh, Vs times R2 over R1 plus R2 and I have Vx which is R1 over R1 plus R2 and that's it. Now if I wanted to solve um, for the, the, the response of this circuit, what I would what I would have to do, or what I'd want to do, is to actually thevenize it, right? Because after all, uh, if I can reduce this to a single R, L, C, and a single source, uh, why would I stick with this more complicated circuit? So let's thevenize it. I'll have a thevenin voltage source and a thevenin resistance and then I have my L and my C. What would be my Thevenin resistance? Well, I'm going to draw a dotted line here, and I'm looking back in here, right? What do I see if I turn off the voltage sources, the independent sources? What resistance do I see? Well, I see R3, and then I see R1 and R2 in parallel, and that's it. And then if I disconnect L and C, right and I look back in here uh, what voltage do I see well when I do that I'm actually looking at uh, the same voltage that I solved for which was the particular solution so this is actually equal to VCP which is just this part here and so I'm I'm good to go if I can solve an RLC circuit which we have yet to do with the R in there uh, I can solve this circuit here that involves many more uh, resistors and, and sources than just a single, uh, single source and resistance.